Welcome to our 2018 uh, study for our LifeLink ministry. It's entitled, So Great a Salvation, Understanding Your Identity in Christ. And we're looking forward to this study uh, this summer, and uh, thank you for being a part of it. And we welcome you tonight to our opening opening night. The essence of this study, we're going to try to answer a basic, very basic, yet very important question. And it's for believers in Jesus Christ, the answer to this question provides a foundation, it will provide a foundation for everything you do. Here's the question. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you as a believer in Jesus Christ? That's a basic question. Who are you? It's a simple question, and yet it is vitally, vitally important. Uh, let me give you a couple of reasons why this matters so much today. And if the first reason is this, identity confusion, although not new, abounds today. Our identity, we, we, we've been told many a times we live in an identity crisis. A lot of people have an identity crisis going on today. A lot of identity confusion taking place today. Uh, if you were to read through Paul's epistles to the churches, almost 50% of the verses address, if you will, the believer's identity. In other words, they're not telling us things we need to be doing, but it's talking about who we are in Christ. Uh, for believers, God wants us to know who we are in Christ. On the contrary, Satan wants to blur the distinctions. He wants there to be confusion about who you are as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a new creature in Christ. You know, today in our culture, there's great confusion about people's identity regarding uh, the first creation, when God created us male and female, and our genders. There's a lot of confusion taking place regarding that. But in Christ, we've become a new creation. And there's still confusion about that new creation as well. Who are we in Jesus Christ? So, here's an example of this. For a person who is in Christ, is he a sinner or is he a saint? Now that's one of the questions that we'll look at a little bit later tonight. But we want to be asking, who are you? Are you a sinner or are you a saint? What is your primary identity? We'll look at that in a few moments. But let me give you another reason of why this is so important today. Identity clarity. So there's identity confusion. That abounds, even with who we are in Christ. But identity clarity is foundational for living the Christian life. Take your Bibles, please, to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. Um, here's the question as you're turning to Ephesians 4, and we'll stop uh, for just a moment and you can discuss this question a little bit. But here's the question. Is it more important to know who you are or to know what you are supposed to do? Is it more important to know who you are or to know what you are supposed to do. Take just a moment and answer that. You might have various opinions on that. That's okay. Uh, but discuss it for just a few moments, and then we'll come back in just a minute. Well, obviously, both are important. It's important to know who you are in Christ, and it's also important to know what you are supposed to do as a believer in Christ. And so, uh, you, you could have argued it both ways. My point is to see there's a difference in it. And, and sometimes we like to focus on one even more than the other. Uh, I do believe that one of them is foundational to the other, and in that sense it's more important. And you can see this just about in any of Paul's epistles, but Ephesians is a primary example of it. If we took Ephesians 1 through 3, there's nothing in those chapters that tell us what we are supposed to do. Instead, the Apostle Paul is, is telling us, this is who you are in Christ. And, and he lists, goes through three chapters about describing our identity in Christ, who we were, who we are now, being made alive in Christ, so on and so forth. And it's not, and then there's no uh, commands, there's no imperatives in, in Ephesians 1 through 3. And then you get to Ephesians 4. And he says, based on that foundation, based on who you are, now this is how you're supposed to live. Look at 
Ephesians 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. This is who you're called to be. This is who you are in Christ. Now, walk worthy of that. So that position in Christ becomes the basis or the foundation for the worthy walk. In other words, God wants you to know who you are in Christ before he expects you to live the Christian life. Uh, if you get your identity wrong, you will struggle to live the Christian life. But understanding your identity in Christ brings great encouragement to live the Christian life. So identity clarity is foundational for living the Christian life. This summer we want to study our great salvation, what God has done in our lives as believers at the point we were saved. And in so doing, we'll understand the new creation we've become in Christ. And that'll lay that foundation for living the Christian life. Tonight we want to just look at this simple truth. And it's going to answer the question that I've already brought up to you. Is uh, a person in Christ, is he, is he a sinner or is he a saint? And we want to look at this truth. Believers in Jesus Christ are saints. They're saints. Well, let's think about this for just a moment. Because when you think of a saint, who do you think of? A lot of times we might think of even in the scriptures. St. Peter, St. Paul, you know, and some of the, the, the New Testament apostles and that sort of things. Oftentimes, when we think of the word saint... We think of some religious hero or someone who has done great things for Christ and has lived a holy life. But think about it this way. If you are a believer in Christ, do you identify yourself as a saint? Now there are reasons why there is confusion about this today. Even locally, even right here in our own community, we've, we've heard talk about saints in recent years with the heavy Catholic influence, um, the Catholic Church wrongly teaches that the process of becoming a saint has to do with the person's work while on earth, and even miracles or perhaps martyrdom that is attributed to the person. In general, they teach you can't become a saint until you die. And that teaching, and the teaching that all saints are spiritual superheroes, has caused a great deal of confusion about this topic. And this has led uh, for, if you will, the common believer to have a wrong understanding of who they are. Now, think about another little statement here. Um, as we're just introducing this, the reality that believers are saints. We don't ask sinners to live saintly, but saints are able to walk saintly. Here's another way to ask the question. At the core of who we are as believers in Christ, are we sinners or are we saints? If, if you were to think about that, and uh, if we're sinners or saints, here's what I want you to do as a, as a group. Um, asking that question, at the core of who we are as believers in Christ, are we sinners or saints? And I'm proposing to you that we're saints. But here's what I want you to do with the question. I want you to ask, why is our answer to that question important? Why is it important to understand if we are a sinner or if we are a saint? And to think about that for a few moments. Why is it important that we are... Um, that we understand, are we a sinner or are we a saint? And I'll be back in just a moment. I would propose an answer to the question uh, that if I were as a believer to identify myself as a sinner, then really, what do sinners do? We sin. I would have no foundation for living a godly life. But if I identify myself, and if God, because of God and the great salvation He has accomplished, am able to identify myself and rightly view myself as a saint because of that great salvation that I have in Christ, then I have the right view of who I am, the right foundation, so that I will be able to live the way in which I ought to live. So let me give you two truths this evening, just to think about this and, 
helping us to understand our identity in Christ. Before we were in Christ, in other words, before we experienced that great salvation, before we were in Christ, our primary identification was that of a sinner. Was that of a sinner. Um, there's four verses for you to uh, read. Matthew 9.13, Luke 6.32, Romans 5.8, and 1 Timothy 1.15. Have a volunteer in your group, read those verses, and just note, before we were in Christ, before our great salvation, uh, or if you haven't yet been saved, then your primary identification is that of a sinner. Read the verses, and I'll be back in just a moment. So we've seen things like Christ came to call sinners to repentance. There's a turning. Something changed then when they, but it's the sinners that needed to repent. Once you're saved, you don't need to repent because you're no longer characterized as a sinner. Luke 6.32 um, talks about the standard of the truly righteous is different from the standard of the sinners, right? Uh, even sinners love those who love them. But uh, the, we're different. We're not described in that passage as the people outside of Christ. Romans 5.8, there's a great little adverb in there. It's the word yet or still. And it's an adverb of time. Um, it, it, and literally, if you look this word up, it's of a thing which went on formerly, whereas now a different state of things exists or has begun to exist. God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners. That was something that happened before, formally, but now we're no longer sinners because Christ died for us and we've been saved through Christ. Um, and then 1 Timothy 115, Christ came to deliver or rescue sinners. You know, one of the reasons why our salvation is so great is that the moment we were saved, our identity changed. We were saved from that state of being a sinner. We no longer need to be saved because He came to save sinners. He's rescued us from that state. And He's changed us, not to keep us as sinners. Um, so Christ came to save sinners, not to keep sinners as sinners. So before we were in Christ, here's the big point, our primary identification was that of a sinner. Now, the second point is this, in Christ, our identity is changed from sinner to saint. Our identity is changed from sin to, sinner to saint. And... Uh, I'm going to just give you um, several verses again and just have you read them. But it's, they're the introductions to many of Paul's letters. And notice what he calls the believers in these churches. He just addresses them as saints. And it's not because they were the pastor or the deacon or the apostle or the prophet. They were just the believers within the body of Christ in that local city. They hadn't died. They hadn't performed miracles or things like that. They were just common believers who had experienced a great salvation. And Christ, or in, in God's Word, calls them saints. The references are these. 1 Corinthians 1, 2. 2 Corinthians 1, 1. I forgot Romans 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 1. Philippians 1, 1. Colossians 1, 1. And um, we'll, we'll stop there. There's a couple in Thessalonians you could read as well. But let's just read those and notice how the believers are called saints. Be back in just a moment. So now that we see we're called saints, we need to ask, what is a saint? You are now called saints. What is a saint then? Well, it's an adjective describing who you are, if you will. A saint means most holy thing. It's the complete opposite, if you will, of being called a sinner. It's the most holy thing of things which on account of some connection with God possess a certain distinction and claim to reverence as places sacred to God, which are not to be profaned. They're set apart for God to be, as it were, exclusively His. In a moral sense, it gives the idea of being pure, uh, sinless, holy, set apart. It's the opposite of sinner. You're a saint, not a sinner. 
Now, how did this identity change? How did this identity change happen, if you will? Uh, well, 1 Corinthians 1-2 uh, gives us a great uh, insight into that. 1 Corinthians 1-2, let me just turn there. And uh, we see this, to the church at, of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. It's because we have been sanctified in Christ Jesus at that great salvation that we are no longer sinners. We've, we've been, there's been a transformation in our soul, and that changes us at the very core of our being. Um, it gives it, it, the the word sanctified there is a past is a perfect tense participle. You might say, well, what what difference does that make? Well, it's a perfect tense means it's a completed action um, that doesn't need to be repeated. It's happened. You've been sanctified. You've been set apart. You are now a saint. You are no longer a sinner. You are now a new creature. I go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, just a little bit later in the epistle. Uh, Paul writes again about this in verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 6. He says, And such were some of you. And that's a great little part there. I didn't read verses 9 or 10, but it lists various types of sin and therefore sinners, right? For example, back in verse 9, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. That's who you were. Your primary identity was that of a sin. Sinners, right? But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were set apart. You became a most holy thing, precious to God. And, and that word there for sanctified is in the passive voice, which means it's not something you did. It's something that has been done to you and for you. Right? You were not the one doing the action. You weren't sanctifying yourself. But God was sanctifying you through the great salvation. It is the work of God that takes a person from being a sinner and making him a saint. Precious, our great salvation. So, we have to then think about that. At the moment of salvation, Christ has made me a new creation. He's put a new heart within me. I've been sanctified. I've been set aside, set apart for Him. I now am a saint. I'm no longer a sinner. Now, I still might sin. As a saint, I might not always live saintly. But my primary identity is that of a saint. You will not see a believer called a sinner in the New Testament. It's who we once were. Now we are called saints. So that leads us then, we've looked at the truths. Let's just conclude tonight by asking this, why is it so important to understand who you are? Why is it so important to understand our identity in Christ? Well, let me give you just a couple of things to chew on and pray this will just whet our appetite for the rest of the study. Uh, here's the first thing. The indicatives of who we are in Christ are just as inspired as the imperatives of what we must do in Christ. It takes us back to that question. What's more important? And so often, for example, in Ephesians, we love to jump into Ephesians 4 through 6 because that tells us what we need to do. That's the practical part. That, that helps us to live it out, right? That's what we need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And for myself, I like to be a doer, right? But i got to remind myself, the indicatives are just as inspired. Ephesians 1 through 3. And, and, and that provides the foundation uh, for everything else. This teaching is for my prophet. It's part of Scripture. If he says we're called saints, well, that's to my advantage to know that, to understand my identity in Christ. And so why is this important? Because the indicatives, which are just statements of facts, if you will, it's a, instead of an imperative, which is a command, it's statements of facts about who you are, who I am in Christ, other things as well. Uh, but the indicatives are just as inspired as the imperatives. Here's a second thing, then, as a result of that. When you understand who you are, it ought to lead us to praising God. I'm not who I once was, and that's because 
of a great salvation. You see, remember, it was in the passive voice, He sanctified me. I wasn't active in that. He's the one that set me. He saved me. He made me alive spiritually. Uh, to God be the glory, great things He has done. Uh, at the end of the night tonight, we're going to work on a memory verse, and, and you as a group can work on it. We'll work on it for several weeks. It's 2 Corinthians 5.17. But if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. But why? It's because of God and what He has done in saving me. And that leads to a, a third um, reason why this is so important. Uh, the indicatives of who we are in Christ provide the foundation for obeying the imperatives. You see, Ephesians 1 through 3, which chapters 1 through 3, which begins even with called saints in Ephesians 1, right? Um, as a saint, now I must live like a saint. But if I think I'm still a defeated sinner and that's not who I am and I'm not sanctified, how do I have the ability as a sinner to live saintly? You don't. You'll be eternally frustrated. As a believer, understand you're a saint. You have everything in Christ now to live that way. To live that way. When temptation comes, fight it with the truth of who you are in Christ. I'm a saint. I've been set apart for God. I'm to serve Him. Find strength and encouragement in your identity as a saint. Um, Sometimes we say it this way, and, and, and those of you that are parents, perhaps you've said this to your children. Um, I think even as a church family, we can do this, but uh, sometimes I'll say to our kids, okay, you're going out, Re remember, represent your family well. As a church, we need to represent our church family well. But really, we're, as I tell it to my children, I'm telling them, remember who you are. Right? You're, you're, you're a Leary, and you, you're, whatever you do is going to be a testimony. Speak about your family. Now, there's a higher reason than just because you're part of an earthly family when I'm teaching our children. It's because you're part of the family of God. But think about that. If you just fight temptation this way as you go out, I'm a saint. i got to represent my Lord well. He's set me apart. He has chosen me and set me apart. And... Um, as I identify myself as a saint, may that encourage you and strengthen you to represent your Savior well. And to live as a saint ought to live. Well, what a great salvation we have in Christ. He's taken us from being a sinner to being a saint. My prayer is that this study will stretch you and, and continue to whet your appetite to know more about what God has done in this great salvation in changing us and making us a new creature, a new creation in Christ. But for now, if you are in Christ, know that you are a saint. You have a little verse to work on? We'll look forward to picking the study up next week. But may God bless you and give you a great rest of the evening.